today we're going to talk a little bit more about using a tangent, uh, tangent line or a secant line uh, to approximate the value of a function um, at a at an x value that's very close to perhaps where the tangent line occurs if we're talking about a tangent line, or at an x value that is between the endpoints uh, where the where the secant line crosses through the function. So we'll note that the function I've drawn here in red is a function that is concave. Uh, we can just tell by looking at it that it's concave up. And if we're talking about um, using a tangent line to estimate the true value of the function at any point um, nearby, uh, we'll notice that if the function is concave up at the point and on the interval surrounding this value where we've drawn our tangent line, looks like here is that x equals 2, the tangent line always lies below the actual function on the interval surrounding 2. Therefore, the tangent line is going to underestimate the true value of the function at that point, or at any point near x equals 2. And we'll note, um, likewise, that if we use a secant line, like the one I've drawn here that goes through 1 and 3, x equals 1, and x equals 3 on our function, we'll note that the secant line is always above the function, since this function is concave up on that interval from 1 to 3, and it would overestimate the true value of the function at any point on that interval. If instead we had a function that was concave down, like this function here, we'd notice that the opposite would be true. The tangent line, which is now above our function in blue here, our tangent line, is going to overestimate the true value of the function because we're concave down. And the secant line is now below the function, so it's going to underestimate the true value of the function at any point. So we're going to need to use this information to determine whether our approximations are going to be greater than or less than the true value of the function at the point that we're looking for the estimate at. Um, and obviously, since we're concerned about whether the function is concave up or concave down, this means we're going to need to use a second derivative. So let's first use a tangent line at x equals 1 to approximate the value of f of 1.1 for f of x equals x squared minus 5x plus 3. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to find the equation of the tangent line at x equals 1, which means we need a point and a slope. So the first step is going to be to find f of 1. And f of 1 is just 1 squared minus 5 times 1 plus 3, or 1 minus 5, which is negative 4 plus 3, which is negative 1. So we're talking about the point 1, negative 1. And the second step is going to be to find the derivative of f of x, f prime of x, which will be 2x minus 5. And then we'll need to figure out what the slope of the tangent line is, and x equals 1. So we'll need to find f prime of 1, which is 2 times 1 minus 5, or negative 3. So we're looking at a tangent line that has the equation of y minus negative 1, or y plus 1, is equal to our slope, negative 3, times x minus 1. This is just point slope form. And if we are going to approximate the value of f of 1.1, 1 .1, well, all we need to do is just plug in 1.1 for x in our tangent line equation and solve for y. So we'll end up with y plus 1 equals negative 3 times 1.1 minus 1, or y plus 1 is equal to negative 3 times 0.1. Negative 3 times 0.1 is negative 0.3. And if we subtract the 1, we'll get y is equal to negative 1.3. So that's our approximation of f of 1.1 using the tangent line. In order to determine if it's an underestimate or an overestimate, we'll need to find the second derivative and see if this function is concave up or concave down. So f double prime of x is just 2. Since 2 is always positive, that means this function is always concave up. 
And as we just saw on the previous two slides, if a function is concave up and we use a tangent line to approximate its value, um, somewhere on that interval where it's concave up, we know that our approximation is going to be an underestimate. And if you forget if it's an under or an over when it's concave up or down for the tangent line or the secant line, it's easy to just kind of well, sketch a concave up function and draw the tangent line. Well, the tangent line anywhere um, is going to be below the true value of the function. Right? There's the true value of my function. There's the tangent line value. Clearly, my tangent line value is less, so it's an underestimate of what the true value is. Now we're going to do the same thing here, the same function, except instead of using a tangent line, we're going to use a secant line on the interval 0 to 2 to approximate that same value of f of 1.1. So first thing we'll need to do is figure out what the slope of the line that goes through 0 and 2 is. So we'll find f of 2 minus f of 0 over 2 minus 0. And f of 2 will be 2 squared, or 4, minus 2 times 5, which would be 10, plus 3, minus f of 0, which is 0 minus 0, plus 3, so just minus 3, all over 2. And 4 minus 10 is negative 6. Add 3 and subtract 3 from that. You still have negative 6. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. And we can now use either point we want, either the point at 0 uh, or the point at 2 to write the equation of this line. I'm going to choose the point at 0, x equals 0, because that's going to give me a y-intercept. It's a point 0, comma, 3, because f of 0 over here was 3. And I'll just use, in this case, slope-intercept form. y is equal to my slope, negative 3, x plus 3. And now, if I want to approximate the value of f of 1.1, all I need to do is put in 1.1 to this function. So y equals negative 3 times 1.1 plus 3. And negative 3 times 1.1 is negative 3.3. If you add 3 to that, you get negative 0, 3. And here we've used a secant line on a function that was concave up because we already saw on the previous page f double prime of x is just 2, which we know is greater than 0, telling us this is concave up. And a secant line will always overestimate the true value of the function on that interval if the function is concave up. So we'll say this is an overestimate. And one thing we might note is that since we use the secant line and we use the tangent line here um, on this problem in the previous one, we can see that the bound on the true value of 1.1, well, it must be somewhere between negative 0 0.3 and from the previous page, negative 1.3. So negative 1.3 is the lower bound because it was the underestimate, and 0 0.3 is the upper bound. It was the overestimate. And the true value of f of 1.1 is somewhere in there between those two. This time we're going to use a tangent line at x equals 2 to approximate the value of f of 1.9 for this really, uh, really pleasant looking function here. x to the fourth minus 8x cubed plus 18x squared minus 4x plus 1. So the first step is to just find the point, which means we need to evaluate f of 2. Right? Otherwise, we can't write an equation of a tangent line without the point. So 2 to the fourth ought to just be 16. And then we have 16 minus 8 times 2 cubed. 8 times 2 cubed, 2 cubed is 8, so that's minus 64. And then we've got plus 18 times 2 squared. Now, 2 squared is 4, and 4 times 18 is 72, so we'll add 72 to that. And then minus 4 times 2 is 8 plus 1. And if we 
put all of that together, let's see, 16 minus 64 plus 72 minus 8 plus 1, seems like that ought to come out to be, looks like 17. So we're looking at the point 2 comma 17 for our uh, point for our tangent line. And then we'll just find our slope by finding f prime of x, which is 4x cubed minus 24x squared plus 36x minus 4, just using the power rule there for all of those. And we'll evaluate f prime at 2, which will be 4 times 2 cubed. The 2 cubed is 8, so 32 minus 24 times 2 squared. 2 squared is 4, so 24 times 4 is 96. And then plus 36 times 2, which is 72, and minus 4. And if you go through and do all of that, 32 minus 96 ought to be negative 64, plus 72 ought to be 8, minus 4 ought to just be 4. So we've got our slope of 4, and we've got our point of 2, comma 17 in point slope form. That ought to give us y minus 17 equals 4 times x minus 2. And if we're going to then see what the approximation would be at x equals 1.9, we get y minus 17 equals 4 times 1.9 minus 2. And of course, 1.9 minus 2 is negative 0.1. And negative 0.1 times 4 is negative 0.4. If you have negative 0 0.4 and you add 17 to that, you better get 16.6. And to determine if it's an underestimate or an overestimate, we need a second derivative. So we'll find f double prime of x. f double prime of x ought to be 12x squared, just using the power rule, minus 48x plus 36. And in order to determine if our function is concave up or concave down at x equals 2, all we have to do is just evaluate this at x equals 2. So f double prime of 2 is 12 times 2 squared. Again, 2 squared is 4, so that's 48 minus 48 times 2 is 96 plus 36 which well, 48 minus 96 is just negative 48. And then if you add a 36 to that, you get negative 12. Negative 12 is less than zero. This tells us that this function is concave down on this interval. And if the function is concave down on an interval, a tangent line is going to be an overestimate. And we'll look at one more here, this time with a secant line. So we're going to look at the secant line on the interval from pi over 6 to pi over 3. And we're going to allow that secant line to be the line we use to approximate the value of f of pi over 4 for 3 sine of x over 3. So first off, we are going to need to uh, come up with the equation of our secant line, which means we're going to have to find f of pi over 3, and we're going to have to find f of pi over 6, and we'll have to then find the difference between those, find our slope, and that'll be pi over 3 minus pi over 6. Now, these are some values that we may not actually be able to come up with. Um, actual values for, like a whole number of values, so we're going to have to do some decimal approximations here. Um, f of pi over 3 is just 3 times the sine of pi over 3 divided by 3. Pi over 3 divided by 3 is pi over 9. So we're looking at 3 times the sine of pi over 9, and you can throw that into your calculator if you want. It comes out to be 
or three sine pi over nine. And then if we're going to do three sine of pi over six over three, that's three sine of pi over 18. And putting that in your calculator is going to give you 0.520944533. And we'll divide all of that by five over three minus pi over six, which is just pi over. Six. So effectively, we're going to take the difference in the top there, multiply it by six, and then divide by five. So 1.026, whatever it was, minus 0 0.5209, blah, 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 is just 0 0.505, 115897, and we're going to multiply that by six and divide it by pi, giving us a value of 0 0.96470030321. And if this was the AP test, we wouldn't be rounding any of these intermediary values. We'd be writing out the full decimal the entire time um, in order to uh, make sure that we round properly at the end. So here's our slope. And we can use either points that we want. It uh, doesn't really matter. Let's just use pi over 6. So we're going to use the point pi over 6, comma, 0.520944533. And we'll then write our equation, y minus my y value of 0 0.520944533 equals our slope of 0 0.96470030321 times x minus pi over six. And we're looking for the value of this at pi over four. So we've still got y minus 0 0.520944533 equals 0 0.96470030321 times pi over four minus pi over six. And we should be able to fairly easily solve that for uh, for y. So pi over four minus pi over six, that's a common denominator of 12. Three pi over 12 minus two pi over 12, so that's just pi over 12. So we're gonna take this 0.9647 number and we're gonna multiply it by pi. We're gonna divide it by 12. And then we're going to add to that the 0 0.520944533. And that ends up giving us y is equal to 0 0.773502481. And it's perfectly acceptable if this was the P test to round this to three or more decimals. So we could call this 0.77 or either of those would be an acceptable answer. And then if we want to figure out if this is an underestimate or an overestimate, we just need to figure out if this function is concave up or concave down on this interval from pi over six to pi over three. So we will take a couple of derivatives here. First, we'll find f prime of x, and f prime of x ought to just become, well, it's 3 sine of x over 3. So using the chain rule, that should become 3 cosine x over 3 times a third, which is just cosine of x over 3. And then if we find the second derivative here, f double prime of x, that ought to become negative one third of the sine of x over 3. And we want to make sure that this function is either concave up or concave down on the entire interval that we're looking at here. Um, now, we can see, first off, that if we were to plug pi over 4 into that, so if we evaluate this at x equals pi over 4, the value we were interested in, um, that would be giving us a sine of pi over 12. And pi over 12 is a first quadrant angle, where sine will always be positive. And if sine is positive, and you multiply it by negative one third, we know this is less than zero, which tells us that it's concave down. And 
it seems like if we were to put in pi over six or pi over three into that also, we're also gonna get concave down. Um, we could test and make sure that this doesn't have any critical values between pi over six and pi over three, not critical values, but any places where it might change concavity by setting sine of x over three equal to zero. If we did do that, in fact, we should probably write that out. I'll write it up here. If we say the sine of x over three is equal to zero, that means, well, that means that x over three, our angle has to equal either zero or pi or two pi. But we can immediately see that this one, the first one gives us x equals zero and this one gives us x equals three pi. So it's not gonna change concavity anywhere between zero and three pi, which would include this interval. So we know that this thing is gonna be concave down at all times on this interval. If it's concave down, a secant line will be an under estimate. And again, if you forget that, you can always just do a quick sketch. You can draw a concave down function and a secant line and see that it's below the true value. And so that's how we're going to use tangent lines and secant lines to approximate the value of a function at, at some x value that might be difficult to evaluate and how we can tell if it is an underestimate or an overestimate. So that's going to be it for this time. Next time we'll talk about the mean value theorem for derivatives.